introduce this video on discussion boards, first of all, telling you a little bit about myself. My name's Terry Bell. Uh, for many of you watching this video, you will know me because I'm your professor, but there will be lots of others watching also, and this video will be equally good for you, I hope. This video is about discussion boards. I have spent 50 years preaching. I have spent 25 years doing adjunct collegiate work. And uh, I, it took me about seven years to get my doctorate. That's after the undergraduate work. One of the things that I've learned is that for education to be effective, it has to it has to bring out the critical thinking aspect of you. And that means a lot when it comes to discussion boards. I've hated them and I've loved them. In discussion boards, it's not so much about the things I teach you, it's about you learning how to think and consequently what follows in this video is an exceptionally important I consider it the rubric for my classes so you better watch this thing carefully discussion boards are either one of the worst things in online teaching and I've been certified to teach online ever since the year 2000, or they can be one of the best things when it comes to online teaching. I think sometimes in academia, some of us who are instructors maybe haven't seen the potential that's in the discussion board, but there is a lot there. I think many times it just kind of comes across as Facebook. It's not Facebook. It's an extremely important element, especially of online teaching. And I don't grade it like other professors. So if you're in my class and listening to this video, I can hear what some of you are going to say, well, I've never had another professor do it like that. Oh, that's true. But part of the great things about a collegiate education is you experience different professors in the way they think and the way they do things. So what follows is critical. Please don't overlook it. If you do, your grade will reflect it. You have all probably heard of the illustration of the power of nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin can be used in a very destructive way. It can bring down mountains. It can blow up homes and blow up people. It's an explosive that, if not in some kind of structured situation, can be highly destructive. However, you can take that same nitroglycerin, put it in the form of a little heart pill, and it can save human lives. Well, that's a little drastic, obviously, uh, to compare that to discussion questions. But I promise you, discussion questions are either great or a terrible waste of time. Our program in Brightspace, the class you're taking, whether it's on Brightspace or Angel or... Um, uh, Blackboard or whatever. Most online programs are based on the discussion boards. 
Most online programs are discussion board driven. So let's start with this. Just number one. If you are responding to a prompt from your professor or even just a question from one of your classmates, the first thing you need to do is repeat that person's name so that your professor can have an idea to whom you're responding. And then you repeat their question. And that geographically just kind of zones in on the situation. Your instructor will have an idea of why you are writing the things you're writing. So right there, two things. Remember those two things. The person you're responding to, put down their name. The Then, repeat their question. Here's an example. Let's say you're responding to a classmate named Sneerwell. I'm using that because I don't want to use any other name that somebody might think I'm talking about them. Hi, Sneerwell. Thank you for your question. What are some of the most important courses a psychologist can take? Right there, you've started off in a good way. You've said you're responding to Sneerwell, and you're, you've said which question you are responding to. Now, second thing is... Try to summarize your response in, a, in, in the first sentence or two. And this is very much like a thesis statement or even on a much smaller scale. It's, it's kind of like an abstract on an academic article. Uh, tell me what, or tell Sneerwell what, the basic uh, basis of your reply is going to be. You may have questions that need clarification. First, and, and here's a way to do it. First, sneer well. I've got a couple of assumptions. I assume you're talking about undergraduate psych major. And of course, I think that you should always take an introduction to a psychology class. And second, the answer probably depends on what branch of psychology the student is wanting to go into. On an undergraduate level, that's not quite as important. But then go on with your assumption here. So you make sure that the communication is flowing. Remember, the problem with communication is the illusion that it's been accomplished. And so you go on with your summary statement. For me, I'll assume psychotherapy. I think the field of psychology would require uh, the history of psychology. Uh, that's an important course. Uh, understanding psychological disorders and therapeutic approaches. Now, on an undergraduate level, these are just kind of introductory courses for what's coming. So let's review here quickly. First of all, when you began your reply, you repeat the name of the person to whom you are writing. And secondly, you repeat that person's question that orients you and uh, the person who wrote the text and the professor who's going to be great your reply. Secondly, just summarize your response. It's like a mini abstract or a small thesis statement. You can summarize it in the first sentence or two. Two or three words that just uh, encapsulate what you're going to say. Here's the third thing. Support your response. Now this is the body of your text. Now we've been talking about this question, what should a student uh, who's going to major in psychology, what kind of courses should he or she take? We take. We've assumed that that's in an undergraduate class and 
we said, here's what I think. Now that's the 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 kind of the summary statement or the uh, the thesis statement. Here's what I think: history of psychology, understanding psychological disorders, and therapeutic approaches. There's your the guts of your reply. That doesn't have to be a long reply, just if you want to put a number there and say, number one, history of psychology. This is important because blah, blah, blah. Number two, understanding psychological disorders. This is important because blah, blah, blah. And number three, therapeutic approaches. This is important because blah, blah, blah. Now, the reality is you can improve that even by saying, I think this is important because, or for example, I think the history of psychology would be important for an undergraduate to take because it kind of orients him as to where psychology has been and where it's heading. Now you're getting into Second, real, some real thinking also called critical thinking. So it's time for us to review again. I always review a lot. It just helps drive it into the neuronal pattern of the student's brain. The more he or she hears it, the more neurons begin to fire in a certain pattern and they begin to kind of stick with you. So let's summarize. First of all, repeat the name of the person to whom you're writing. Repeat the question that he or she asked. Secondly, summarize your response with the question we talked about. Say, I, I think here are the courses we need, history of psych, introduction to psych, psychotherapies, disorders, etc. And then third, we talked about supporting your response. Here's the fourth thing. And by the way, supporting your response means to enter into that critical thinking stage where you think about thinking. Here's the fourth thing. In my classes, I require scholarly support on at least the question that I put out there. Your response to me needs to be supported by at least two scholarly resources, references. Now, what I mean by scholarly, I don't mean something you got off Twitter. And I certainly don't mean something you got off Facebook or even something you found on Wikipedia. And I think there's some good things that Wikipedia has, but they're not this. And they're not this for writing papers. You don't derive quotes from Wikipedia because it's a wiki. It can change the next day. And you don't just fly around and find something called simple psychology for wannabe psychologists or something like that. Don't just Google that kind of stuff. It's trash. And it's hard to find. Let me give you a little clue here. It's really easy to find scholarly articles. If you're taking Brightspace, just look up under student resources and go down to library or uh, and from library, just go through EBSCOhost, maybe hundreds of thousands scholarly articles there. You you punch in the search, library will give you a guide how to do that if you don't know how to do that. And you will have scholarly articles coming out of your ears on almost any subject you choose. Not only that, but these articles, it'll tell you exactly how to cite them. And you, if you're in one of my classes, it's APA, but you might be somewhere where it's MLA or Chicago or uh, Turabian or wherever. Uh, and, and you just choose the one that you want. You click on it and there's your citation. You copy it and you paste it on. That's easy. 
So you're required to respond to the professor's prompt. Now this may change from class to class and professor to professor, but I'm just saying this as an example. This is how it works in my class. You're required to respond to my prompt question. And in that prompt question, you need to give two scholarly uh, uh, scholarly references. And a scholarly reference is not how to be a great psychologist in three easy, quick lessons. Make them scholarly, peer-reviewed articles. And you not only respond then to my prompt, but you also respond to at least two of your classmates. Now, please notice that I said at least. I always like it better if you do more than that, but at least. And there's a word count that's posted in your rubric, uh, and that rubric is, is posted in my classes under your uh, uh, introduction to the course on content page, your table of contents. And do all that you're required, three responses, and in their responses to me, these scholarly references. Now, I want you to notice this. Please, if you haven't taken, uh, if you haven't taken this seriously so far, if you're starting to, to burn out a little bit, I want you to take a deep breath, oxygenate some of those neurons, and listen to this. Every post requires a concluding question in my class without exception. Now that's the required post. You're only required three, one to me and two to others to classmates. You can do the others with that too. Why, why do I say that? Uh, you know, we all need to Listen more, ask more, so we can learn more. In my classes, you need to use scholarly sources and ask critical thinking questions. Let's talk a little bit about that. I'm just expanding now on the fourth um, Posts that uh, on the po po point that I made. So this is point four continued. Conclude with this thoughtful question of Socrates, who said, "Sometimes there is more knowing in the questions than in the answers." It's not my job to teach you a bunch of information and facts. It's my job to help you learn how to think. And I can learn more about you by listening to your questions. As I told you in the early part of this, I was senior pastor for many different churches, Planet Church, also uh, for a mega, mega church in Texas. and had to do a lot of hiring and usually there were several steps that it had to go through to come up to me. And I was not nearly so interested as their answers to my questions because I figured by the time they got to me they had all that worked out. What I was interested in, what kind of questions are they going to ask me? What kind of thoughtful questions are they going to ask me? Let me give you a hint on questions. Never ask a question that can be answered with a single word. And those questions can slip up on you like, what do you think about psychology? The reply can be, good. It's good. No, don't ask that. Make the reader of your post dig down deep and probe the inner workings of his or her own mind. Maybe a question like, why do you think psychology is important for Christians to know in this, this 
current world that we live in. Give me three reasons. So just to review, I've told you I love to review. In this video, we've learned how to master a discussion board. There's an introduction to your reply. Thank the person you're replying to. You repeat the question. Secondly, uh, you summarize your reply. You put in a little mini thesis statement or uh, a little mini abstract, your central idea, uh, and, and and then you're saying, "Here's here's my main thoughts for my response to you." And then maybe two or three words that you're going to build on. One of your responses may be, I wasn't real clear, for example. You could say this to the person that you're replying to. I wasn't real clear in what you meant by psychology student. Because you really didn't identify that as a graduate or undergraduate student or, or who. Clarify. Thirdly, your reply, make sure you're responding to the concluding question. When I read your discussion boards, I'm looking for that. And be sure that your points relate to the summation points you made in point two. And finally, your references and thoughtful concluding question. Make sure it's a critical thinking question. If you don't know what a critical thinking question is, Google that. And never ask a question that can be answered in one word. Thank you for watching this video. And I really do look forward to meeting you on the discussion boards. Remember, this isn't Facebook.